The world is a wonderful place. It bursts with variety and potential. Sure, life has its share of pain and suffering, but humanity overall trudges on undaunted, ever striving to better itself, ever pondering what lies beyond the horizon. The more we learn about our universe, the more we realize how special we are as thinking beings and what a privilege it is to be alive and capable of beginning to understand our place among the stars. The world is ours. It is everything we are and will be. It compels us to move forward and progress. If, however, you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the world is not wonderful at all. It is filled with evil and temptation. Lost souls who, themselves pitifully estranged from their Creator, seek to hurt you or drag you off into depravity with them. If you are unfortunate enough to be one of the 99.9% .9 of Earth's population who is not a witness, then you are one of those cursed people, a worldly person. It is irrelevant whether you are religious or atheist, Christian or Buddhist. You could be a doctor or fireman, someone who works in a soup kitchen, or someone who helps old ladies across the street and rescues stray kittens. It doesn't matter. You are still worldly, in a spiritually destitute condition, and therefore deemed a corrupting influence, unsuitable material for friendship or association. But fear not, there is hope. Witnesses are, in their words, untainted by the filth of Satan's world. Once you meet one of them, you will receive the opportunity to see the error of your ways and learn the truth about God's plan for mankind. However, be warned. If you have the impudence to reject this generous offer, your name will be wiped from God's book of life. The purpose of your existence will be merely to await divine execution at Armageddon. You can only hope that your demise will be swift and not too excruciating. Birds will be summoned to dispense with your decaying remains. Conversely, all those who embrace the truth when given the chance will be spared annihilation. Once the fiery wave of the apocalypse has passed, this chosen people will fashion the earth into a paradise where, as you might expect, everyone will be a Jehovah's Witness. Despite their somewhat morbid and condescending outlook, Witnesses are mostly very pleasant people. They are individually capable of great love and kindness. If someone were to attack you or mug you in the street, the chances are they would not be a witness. A witness would be more likely to defend you against your assailant. As a rule, witnesses do not drink excessively, nor do they smoke or take drugs. They are generally not violent or abusive. If you could picture the ideal citizen who is responsible and law-abiding, you could do far worse than call to mind a typical Jehovah's Witness. The fundamental difference between an ordinary person and a Jehovah's Witness is that the life of a witness is effectively micromanaged by a religious hierarchy based in America. Jehovah's Organization is the term often employed by witnesses to describe the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and its many affiliated legal entities, which I will collectively refer to as Watchtower. Watchtower is controlled by a small group of men based in the state of New York who call themselves the governing body. This governing body claims to be used by God to direct what they will tell you is the earthly part of his organization. God's organization has a heavenly part too, comprised of God, Jesus and the angels. Sadly, not everything Watchtower asks witnesses to do or believe is entirely loving or beneficial to them or others. I know this because I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for 23 years before officially leaving on December 29th, 2013.
I'm Lloyd Evans, and you have just been listening to the first 648 words of my forthcoming book, The Reluctant Apostate. The book is very nearly finished, with just two more chapters to complete. I'm projecting it will be available on Amazon by January 2017 at the latest. It's just possible I might have it ready in time for Christmas, and I will try my hardest to make that happen. But just to make sure I don't disappoint anyone, January 2017 is the official month of release. Anyway, many of you have been asking if it's possible to pre-order a copy or get a copy signed. Since I do have some costs to meet in getting the book over the finish line, such as paying someone to do a really nice book design, paying for ISBN numbers and paying for an initial print run, I've decided to do an Indiegogo campaign. In exchange for helping me meet my costs of $1,470, I will be arranging to print and mail out advanced copies of The Reluctant Apostate before they appear on Amazon. If you're willing to throw me a bit of extra love, you can have your copy signed or even have your name appear in the acknowledgements. All monies raised will be hugely appreciated and any surplus will go towards assisting me with my activism and helping me promote the book. So if you want to help me bring this book, which I've been working on since 2012, the final few feet across the finish line, click on the Indiegogo button, select your reward and wait for your book to arrive. Allow me to thank all of you in advance for what I'm hoping will be a successful project that may just help free a few minds from cult indoctrination. And as always, thank you for watching.